All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This is our Wrestling 911 video blog or Wrestling Radio. Some may call it a podcast. In this case, we're going to be talking about fantasy booking WrestleMania for 2015. I'm going to talk about how I would book WrestleMania, and I'd be curious to hear your insights and how you would do it. In the background, we'll have some different Wrestling 911 banners and images and magazines from the past. Uh, feel free to comment those, talk about them, check them out. In the meantime, let's get right to it. Now, what's interesting about WrestleMania is that it's just very difficult, and I didn't realize this, with as many people on the roster to go ahead and give a fair shake to as many people as should be at WrestleMania. When I go to WWE.com, which I'm doing right now, it's difficult to go ahead and say, oh, only these 10 or 20 guys need to be at a WrestleMania card. I mean, there are truly a lot of superstars. So I'm going to talk about my main events first. I'm going to talk about the wild cards. And before we leave this video blog, I'm going to go ahead and give you an idea of who I think should be the next members selected for the Hall of Fame. Now I understand the WWE doesn't want to put all their biggest names out there in one year, but I'm going to give who I feel are the top guys that need to be in the WWE Hall of Fame sooner than later. With that being said, let's talk about how, how I would book the WWE title match. Now first off, um, they've been building Brock Lesnar for a long time now. And we don't know if he's going to be sticking around. So I think that's a key important aspect to this is, you know, if you're going to book WrestleMania, you would have to know if Brock Lesnar is going to be around next month. Well, I think at least in matchmaking, we'll, we'll call this exercise a matchmaking exercise. Um, Obviously, you go into WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar's the champion. You need somebody who can pose a threat to him. Now, you've already had John Cena wrestle him. Big Show's not in his league. And I don't think Bray Wyatt is quite ready for that challenge as a WrestleMania main event for the title. So who does that leave? How I would book it is I would have had Daniel Bryan return to the WWE at the Royal Rumble. I would have had him a surprise entry as number 30, because remember last year, everyone expected him to be number 30, and it wasn't him, it was Rey Mysterio, and the crowd booed. They really wanted the yes chant. So you have Daniel Bryan's surprise return at Royal Rumble, you have him win the Royal Rumble, and then you build up the fact that he had to vacate his title, you know, he never got his chance as the WWE Champion and that this is his chance to face the person who has dominated the WWE and held his title. Um, now you can either have Brock Lesnar win or lose in this case at WrestleMania, um, depending on whether or not he's staying, but I think the idea of um, the underdog, Daniel Bryan, once again taking on the champion, I think, I think that's an amazing storyline that could really be pushed you do some great video packages. You could hype it with Paul Heyman really pushing the fact that Daniel Bryan doesn't stand a chance. I think it would be an interesting match. I think Daniel Bryan, you've seen him against the Big Show, and he proved that that was, that was somebody who he could take on. You saw CM Punk take on Brock Lesnar, and it was a very entertaining match. So I think those two could pull it off despite the size difference. I think that's a real aspect there, is the size difference between these two. Um, if you bring Brock Lesnar to television, make sure to accentuate the idea that this smaller individual is taking on a giant. Which, to some degree, is reminiscent of Hulk Hogan taking on Andre the Giant, that here you have this guy who's, who's a big star, but he's taking on someone who's seemingly out of his league. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, you may see a lot of independent wrestlers from Florida in the background on your screen. If you get a chance, 
check out our channel. You'll see a lot of these individuals wrestling up every week. I'll be uploading videos from a lot of these folks, so make sure to check it out. Now, when this is recorded, we're too into, too early into the WrestleMania season to know who Sting is going to take on. But I just went to the drugstore. They had a preview of WrestleMania magazine, and it did have Sting on the cover. And we kind of know that Sting's going to be at WrestleMania. They've been teasing that for a year now. But who's he going to face? So, in my opinion, I still want to see that dream match that they've kind of been promoting, which is Sting versus The Undertaker. I feel that they knew that Sting versus The Undertaker with the streak intact was unnecessary. Because if Sting takes on The Undertaker with the streak, you know that Sting's going to lose. So that's why they killed off the streak last year, knowing full well that they had other plans for The Undertaker this year, and that being Sting versus The Undertaker. Assuming The Undertaker is in good enough health to take on Sting, it would be a great match. And I really think The Undertaker, there's no reason why he isn't in, in good enough health. He hasn't wrestled in a year. He's been able to rest up. Um, I don't think anybody's reported any major ailments or injuries to Taker. So I think that match would be what I want to see. Now possibly the most difficult match for me to make is one for John Cena. And here's why. There's nobody in the WWE today that I particularly want to see John Cena wrestle. And by the way, in the background of this, you're seeing... Um, 911 Wrestling Magazine, which you can buy on magcloud.com. And then we're also going to show you some photos from Full Impact Pro that I took a while ago. So leave me a comment. Who would you want to see John Cena face? Personally, you know, I've, I've seen him face the big show. I've seen him face Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar. You know, The Undertaker isn't the guy for him. So who is John Cena supposed to face? Triple H? Maybe. But I honestly don't have somebody that I would love to see John Cena face. So this is why I think that they need to bring in a legend, a celebrity, if you will. Whether that's a Stone Cold Steve Austin, or a Rock, or Hulk Hogan, I would love to see John Cena face somebody from history. The current head honcho of WWE versus somebody who was the head honcho years ago. I think that's the only way to go with this one. Because frankly, I don't want to see him take on Kane or The Big Show or <clears throat> even Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan, Jack Swagger. There's nobody there, even Rusev, that I think is quite the right guy to headline. Because if John Cena's on it, it's going to be a, a main event. I don't see that there's a guy in the WWE that would be that exciting to see against John Cena. I think John Cena's just overexposed. He's wrestled too many guys who are already on the roster. I'm not interested to see him wrestle more of the same folks. What do you think? Who should he face? I'm going to say it needs to be a celebrity. It needs to be, uh, if you will, a legend is probably the better term. Somebody like Hulk Hogan, somebody like Steve Austin, somebody like The Rock. Somebody needs to come back and face John Cena because everything else is old hat at this point. All right. I better start wrapping this up here pretty soon because there's a lot to talk about and I try to keep these under 10 minutes. Okay, so for a Divas match, I would have saved Nikki and Brie Bella one-on-one -on -one for WrestleMania and I would have built that up for years that those two hated each other. I think they blew off what could have been an impressive feud between Nikki and Brie Bella for one or two quick matches. That could have been the Divas match at WrestleMania. If not that match... Then maybe a tag team match with the Bellas as faces versus Stephanie and AJ Lee teaming up as heels. I think Stephanie could have promoted a feud with Nikki. They could have picked their partners and really had a pretty interesting match. All right, I like to keep these under 10 minutes, but it appears we're going to go into overtime. Um, one match that I absolutely think has to happen at WrestleMania, and I think it's a show stealer. I think that's Sami Zayn from NXT versus Kevin Owens for the NXT title. I think they've been building up that match for a while. I think those two guys are the most talented wrestlers, possibly in the WWE, and I would love to see that match happen. Um, we've seen hints of it. They've been teasing it. 
And those guys are really talented. And what better way to make a debut for both of those guys but in a match that could steal the show at WrestleMania. So an NXT title match has to happen, and I would love to see it. Now, you have to figure out what to do with Roman Reigns as well. Now, Roman Reigns is the up-and-coming star, but I just, I'm not in love with him yet. I think he's an interesting person. I think he's talented. I think he's got the look. What was interesting to me is I heard on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, a caller called in and said, I love Roman Reigns, and it was some teenage girl. And he asked why, and she goes, well, he looks good and he poses well. And I always forget that some people just want to see somebody who looks the part. So I think Roman Reigns has a future, and I think a match with Triple H could help cement his future in the WWE. Uh, Triple H putting him over at WrestleMania and look, making him look like a monster could be great for Roman Reigns' career. And the WWE always likes to showcase and present um, younger individuals and give them a chance at WrestleMania. So I think that could be the right match for Triple H to put somebody over. Go ahead and leave your comments if you think Triple H would actually put somebody over at WrestleMania. I'd love to hear from you. And as we record this, make sure you're thinking about how you would book the matches, how you would book the card. Leave me your reviews as a comment below. Alright, because there's so much talent in the WWE, you have to have some kind of combined match. A six-man match, a battle royal, something. And I think the people that need to be showcased on that, obviously Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, Cesaro, Rusoff, Swagger, Wade Barrett, could be in some sort of number one contenders match, elimination match, um, cell match, something that allows those guys to get time at WrestleMania. Also, I think a match between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, uh, that could happen. Um, but another match that I think really could put over a younger star is Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. I think Jericho's great at getting guys over, and Bray Wyatt is the right guy to put over at WrestleMania. There's still a bunch of talented individuals that I haven't even mentioned. Um, Kane and Sheamus certainly could be a pre-match to WrestleMania, um, but that really puts us at nine matches, so I don't know that it's necessary, but like I said, there are a lot of talented individuals. You probably have 100 people on the roster, and you can only pick so many to make it to WrestleMania. All right, everyone, here's what may be last, and this could be a blog, video blog, all on its own. It's people who need to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Obviously, Macho Man Randy Savage is at the top of that list. Nobody can dispute that Macho Man needs to be, he needs his own wing in the Hall of Fame. And you know what? Miss Elizabeth probably needs to be in there too. Like, let's not put Randy in unless we're also going to put in Elizabeth. Um, another team that I think needs to go in together is Demolition. For years, the WWE has forgotten about Demolition. I don't know why, but they always seem to just overlook demolition. And I've got my own theories on that, and that's going to have to be its own video blog. Others, obviously The Undertaker deserves a spot in WrestleMania, and he'll probably go in when WrestleMania is in Texas, but I think he needs to be in there. Uh, Lou Fez, probably the biggest name in pro wrestling history to really not be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, the Rock, I don't believe he's in the Hall of Fame yet. Bruiser Brody, Certainly he needs to be there. Stinger, this could be a great year to put Sting in the Hall of Fame. First match in the WWE, and he goes into the Hall of Fame. That would be a uh, great sight to see. Other honorable mentions, if, you have, if the WWE would have enough spots in the Hall of Fame, I would think Stan Hansen needs to be in there. Abdullah the Butcher, a legend. Sid Vicious, I mean, this guy's held a lot of big championships, big name, big guy, drew a lot of money for a lot of people. Obviously, at some point, they're going to have to put Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame as well. Um, that's going to be a sticky situation, so they're going to have to get the support of the Hart family to do that. And then the last but not least, Mr. ECW himself, Paul Heyman, needs a spot in the Hall of Fame. That's my simple opinion. I would love to hear your feedback. Who do you think needs to be in the Hall of Fame who isn't there already? Well, folks, I thank you for your time. I would love to hear from you. Comment below if you enjoyed this. Um, took an hour out of my Saturday morning kind of putting this together. 
If you would like me to do more of these, tell me. Click like. Click, click dislike if you want, but at least leave some sort of an interaction. Um, give your opinions on how you would book WrestleMania in 2015, how you would uh, lead up to it. There's a lot of discussion. We haven't even talked about who, who we think should win each match. But again, thanks again for watching. I'm Snowman Jones, your host at Wrestling911.com. Please come back regularly. We have new videos all the time. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.